Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody, consultant in reproductive medicine and surgery at the Homer University Hospital, London. Today I'm going to discuss a case that has been sent to me by a senior consultant. And beyond, without doubt, it is a slightly confusing case and worth, worthy of a discussion. One of the things what you learn in England is that consultants bounce ideas with each other. We would pick up the phone and ask our colleagues if we were creating or we looked at something and we thought it was an error or we got something wrong. That forms the foundation of good medical practice and also allows us to learn better. I am more than happy to answer any queries sent to me as long as it's in full format and I'll be happy to discuss this in an open forum, maintaining patient confidentiality. Now let's look at this. Primary infertility, PCOS woman who has been slotted for IVF, irregular periods, more than 40 days, anterior follicle count of around 17, and IVF was planned. So let's look at the, the first cycle. In the first cycle, she was given an antagonist cycle. She had a baseline AMH of 3.6 and FSH of 6.2, LH of 6.7, still reasonably within normal limits. I, I'm not aware of any pretreatment, but on day three, 150 of gonalef was started. Antagonist was added on day seven. If you have a look at that folliculogram and just have a look at one on top. And if you see that at the folliculogram, have a look at day seven, you have a reasonably good cohort of follicles in the range of between 10 and 12 millimeter. And then the doses dropped to uh, to a hundred of gonalef and an antagonist continued. And I believe that they must have seen a more aggressive response that's coming up. Let's look at the next scan. The next scan is done on day 10, three days later. And often I would say take a ruler and put a line across that to see the trajectory of growth. Remember one thing that follicles grow faster after 14 or 15 millimeter. And the reason is that their dependency on FSH steadily decreases, LH replacing it. And it's important to know that increasing the dose later on and pushing the ovary harder very rarely makes any benefit. And that's something which you have to understand. So once again, if you have a look at this, there's been a rapid growth that occurs. It does occur in PCOS patients. Again, there are about four or five follicles which were seen in around 17 to 19. Again, a large number of follicles seen at 16. HCG 1000 given on 10, day 10 and on day 12, oocyte pickup was done. At the oocyte pickup, the progesterone levels were found to be high. They are always high. In fact, I'll come back to it a bit later. 35 hours later, oocyte retrieval was done minimum fluid in the pouch of Douglas and no sites were obtained. So it was thought probably there's been premature ovulation. The progesterone that day was 23.4. Now, let's look at the progesterone rise. And I don't know how many of you all do a progesterone after an analog trigger. And it's surprising to see a progesterone rise occur dramatic to the 12 hours after an analog trigger, which means that as the effect of LH starts coming up, the luteal cells start secreting more progesterone. And this is important. And I, in my opinion, I believe that the higher your progesterone in analog trigger, the better your chance of getting an egg. But that's a discussion outside this case. And that's something to do with how to fine tune the analog trigger, which usually I discuss in the course. Now, Let's look at the salient points here. Day three start of 150, dose dropped, a rapid growth from day seven to day 10, day 10 trigger, and 
no oocytes, probably early ovulation. So a second cycle was done and the second cycle FSH was started again, the recombinant FSH on day 2, 150 and the antagonist was started on day 6. If you have a look at the follicular growth, again the growth follicles around 16 or 17 but a large number of follicles in the area of 12 to 14. Three days later a collection was done. So another day was given for follicular growth and oocyte collection was done at 33 hours. Again, oocytes were not obtained. Both the times, HCG trigger being given. The question is, what do we do here? Let's have a look at both those graphs again. And let's go back to the basics. It's very important to try, and I believe a very, in a very salient feature, that the closer you work with nature, your chances of IFA working are the best. The further away you move from nature, the chances of IVF working tend to be worse. But this lady has is responsive. She's certainly responsive to 150 of gonadotrophins with a very rapid growth. But why is it that you don't get X? I think it's still difficult to answer this question, but I can suggest a few changes that we, we may do here. One is I'm quite happy that you can try the antagonist cycle, but start stimulating either with pretreatment with Proganu or the pill. The reason I'm saying that it's, it suppresses a certain amount of LH. Now, if you have a look at the LH in the first case, the LH in the day of oocyte pickup was 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, indicating that cetrotide or the antagonist had worked. You know, what I would suggest is a slight change here. I would suggest that we move from giving recombinant to giving HMG. I, my reason here is I think in PCOS we should not be using recombinant or rather move to HMG because one is if you're planning for a fresh transfer your results are slightly better with HMG because it lowers progesterone. Question two which comes up is it also allows for a smaller recruitment of follicles, which is needed in this case. Third is, if you have a look at it, the follicles have been in a range of between 14 and 20 and 18, which means there's been a general large growth of follicles, you know, across a range. Now, in those cases, I would suggest that give at least 13 days of stimulation. Forget the size of the follicle. And I think that's something we need to get out of our head. It's not the size of the follicle that matters, it's the length of stimulation that matters. Size of follicle, yes, if you've got 11 days or 12 days of stimulation, is brilliant. But it is at the end, the length of stimulation, the sti what is required to start the process of creating mature oocytes. Knock it down to, start with a slightly higher dose of 225, a faster recruitment. But the other, don't drop the dose. Next, Add the antagonist on day four of stimulation. If you are worried that there's been luteinization, the earlier you start the antagonist, the results are better. And lastly, do not give HCG. HCG luteinizes small follicles, and my worry is in the second cycle, there's been more of luteinization of follicles rather than the follicles being ready for oocyte retrieval. So I would suggest that we have a look at it, but give an analog trigger. What dose? Between 2 2.5 ml of pisarolin and the same dose, a huge, about four times the higher dose. Why? Because one is it releases FSH and LH, and if at all there is a problem with HCG trigger here, I think that it will address something normal. Uh, and let's try that. I'm quite certain that if you give her HMG 13 days of stimulation, slightly longer, I think you should be able to get oocytes, but I think also you need to freeze these embryos because with an analog trigger, unless you add HCG, I don't, pregnancy rates are very, very low. It is quite a tricky case. I will await to hear from what happens and, it, and at times when I get a reply saying this treatment worked, it does make me extremely happy. Again, if you have any queries, if you want to send these messages to me, do send it in an email. I'm more than happy to answer it. 
it allows us to have a look at different cases. It allows training for across many people. Thank you very much.